Okay, so it's okay if you weren't here. You're going to probably catch up pretty quick. Even, or not if you weren't here, but I mean, if you didn't watch that video, it's not that hard. Okay, so we were starting on definite intervals. So instead of doing this with a bunch of rectangles and approximating it, we found out what it would be actually. So what we do, we don't look at the picture, we just look at this for now. Um, we take the antiderivative like we normally would. So you would take the negative 2x, you would take the exponent, add 1 to it, right? So negative x squared. So that would be right. It would be squared. And then you divide it by the exponent, which was 2. So the 2's would cancel and you get negative x squared, like you said. Yeah, it hates me. Then for the 3, what would we do? 3x. Yeah, we just add 3x. And then don't forget Chuck. Yep, Chuck. Are we going to find out what Chuck is? Well, you're going to see what happens, but yeah. So now we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 5, because that's what these numbers are telling us. So if you didn't watch the video from Friday, we learned that if you have an antiderivative from A to B, all you have to do is find out what the antiderivative is and evaluate it at the top number, f of b, minus evaluating it at the bottom number. So we plug in the top number and plug in the bottom number, and we subtract those. So, like on this, then I plug 5 in. You get negative 5 squared plus 3 times 5 plus C minus, and then we plug in 0. Thank you. And they, I don't know why they're negative. Oh, because there's a negative out there. Okay. Zero squared plus three times zero plus c. Are we going to distribute the numbers? Uh, well, I'm going to work out each set of parentheses and then I'll subtract them. But yeah, you could distribute. So 5 squared is 25. So negative 25 plus 15 plus C minus, yeah, 0 plus 0 plus C. So C. Are you cool with that? Okay, negative 25 plus 15 is negative 10 plus C minus C. What happens to the C? Go away. They go away. And you get negative 10 for your answer. Okay, so then if you notice, if you had watched, or even if you didn't, for each one of these I did the same thing, and look what happens to the C. It goes away. Yeah, because you're subtracting it. You're adding, you have F of B minus F of A, so they're going to always cancel out. Always. So when, always. So when you do a definite integral, there's not going to be a C. Now, we said that we knew that a definite integral was the area under the curve, area between the line and the x-axis. So, so negative 10, that's one. Negative 10 is what? Plus okay. So, from 0 to 5, so... It is 
So we're going to find the area of this and the 5. So area of this Okay, so we'll start with this blue shape. Um, the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, or 1 half base times height. So the base is 1.5. That's what it's going to right there. So area equals base, 1.5. The height goes up to 3 for the blue one. Divided by 2. Uh, so 1.5 times 3 divided by 2, or 1.5 times 1.5 plus you. I believe it's 6.25. Let me double check it. No, 2.25. Yeah. So the blue area is 2.25. Now let's find the green area. Area equals base, so one, two, three and a half for this. Oh, okay, so this is right here. Uh, the height, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like. Would it be negative seven? Just we're going to, when we get done, we're just going to say the area is negative because it's below the x-axis. Okay. Divided by two. So it's 3.5 times 3.5. I can't type. 12.25. So this is a negative because it's below the x axis. So now when I find the area of those two shapes, you're right, I just add them together. So 2.25 plus negative 12.25 is negative 10. I know, right? So notice it's the same. This is what we found. So based on all that stuff, there are some uh, rules. There's always rules. It can't always be math. Huh. It says hey, you can do math, but only on this guideline. It's like your English, like in E one after Don't use this comment. Now this we should already know, but the antiderivative or the definite interval from a to b of f of x is the area of the region bounded Ooh, fancy. I know, right? By f of x, the x-axis. and x equals a and x equals b. So basically between the graph, the x-axis, and my beginning and ending point. I think this is this may be a dumb question. Yes. But why is a on the bottom? That's just the way they because it's, it's from a to b. It must be. I mean you subtract that way, but it's from a to b. So if I wrote it the other way, it would be wrong. Yes. Okay. Bad, bad, wrong. <laughs> this meant you'd be going to the left. Yes, you would. You'd be doing a left. Yeah. Ends up being negative when you do it that way. Yes. Or the opposite. Okay. So if we do a to b of f of x dx and we get zero, 
that happens if, that's just, you know, on A to B, there is an equal. What does that mean? Amount. You said equal, and I was like, what's an equal? Oh. <laughs> I was like, wait, this other Of area above and below the x-axis. I have a follow-up question. Yes. So if I, so when I write this b to a, do I, like, is my first number going to be b when I, like, write this? That makes no sense. Okay. So my first number that I write, like f of, it'd be f of a first plus the f of b. The so I'm, formula. Yeah, I'm being slow. Is right here. So it's b minus. Okay, so that's why it's on top. I got you. Okay. My brain's a little slow. I'm no, it's all right. I'm just trying to follow you. So. Yeah, yeah, my brain's not following itself. Okay, so for example, we did one like this. It was here. You just may or may not have watched the video. But when we do the, inter the integral, we can call it that now because it has numbers on it. But the integral from negative 1 to 4, that means the area from negative 1 to 4. And see how these are exactly the same? So since the areas are on top and the area on bottom are exactly the same, then it's zero. And it turned out to be zero mathematically, too. But that's why it's zero.